Hello students, welcome to Sarasa classes. Today, we are going to discuss osmium tetroxide, which is in continuation of the lecture series, Oxidizing Reagents. Physical properties, colorless solid, highly toxic, highly expensive. If it is appearing to be little yellowish, then obviously the osmium tetroxide is being contaminated with OSO2. Because it is highly expensive reagent and a highly toxic reagent, so idea is to use it in small amounts. That means after reaction, it can be regenerated using other co-oxidants, which are obviously hydrogen peroxide, we can use TBHP, which is tetrabutyl hydroperoxide, or N-oxides such as NMO, or one can even use potassium ferricyanide. Solvents, water, acetone, alcohol, ether, or dry ether, also can be a cyclic ether such as THF or dioxane or can be some non-polar solvents such as benzene. They can be used. Next part will be Abjohn's dihydroxylation. So what is it? Synthesis of 1,2 diols having syn selective stereochemistry from alkenes by use of catalytic amount of osmium tetroxide and a stoichiometric amount of an oxygen such as NMO. So whenever you use osmium tetroxide in combination with NMO and synthesis of syn-selective 1,2 diols happen from alkenes that is known as Upjohn's dihydroxylation. Something about the mechanism of the reagent. So here we are having osmium tetroxide and it can undergo a 2 plus 2 cyclization reaction with the alkene giving you this intermediate where it will further rearrangement to give you the cyclic osmate ester. The trialkylamine is lost and this particular ester undergoes hydrolysis to give you the syn selective 1,2 diol. Other pathway can be thought of in the next line in which the trialkylamine attacks the or attaches with the osmium tetroxide which then undergoes a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction giving you the cyclic osmate ester which further undergoes hydrolysis to give you the 1,2 syndiol. What is the role of these trialkyl amines? So over here we will say tertiary alkyl amines or acyl ligands such as 4-dimethylaminopyridine that is DMAP or pyridine they accelerate their role is to accelerate the reaction that is this cycloaddition reaction or that cycloaddition reaction by coordinated with the osmium and weakening the OS bond okay that is its role and also increases the rate of hydrolysis some practice problems along with the entire mechanism as we can see we have the osmium tetroxide it is undergoing a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction on using water the hydrolysis takes place osmium from plus 8 oxidation state is now going to plus 6 
oxidation state. This is the co-oxidant, which is your NMO, that is N-methyl morpholine enoxide, which will help to convert the osmium from plus six oxidation state to plus eight. Okay, and that's how the catalytic cycle works. Next, for asymmetric dihydroxylation, we have used some alkaloids, which we will discuss in near future. Now, to remove the O osmium unit, okay, from the osmate ester, the hydrolysis is carried out by using some reducing agents. And those are bisulfite and pyridine, or it can be bisulfite in presence of aqueous ethanol, KOH, with mannitol is also a reducing medium. It can be potassium chlorate, okay, with, or rather I should say potassium chlorate in presence of H2SO4. That is also acting as a reducing agent or directly one can use the lithium aluminum hydride as a reducing agent. What about the reactivity of olefin? What is the influence of electron donating and withdrawing groups? So when it is concerned with alkenes, electron donating groups will always be increasing the reactivity of that particular olefin and electron withdrawing groups will always decrease the reactivity. Okay. So how electron rich is the pi bond that will decide the reactivity of the alkene with the osmium tetraoxide. So here suppose we have electron withdrawing groups attached to this particular alkene and here we have nothing. That means this particular pi bond over here will be more reactive than this pi bond and hence 1 comma 2 dihydroxylation will take place on this particular pi bond and nothing will happen over here. Next, we will do malaprade leminux Johnson reaction in which we are using the osmium tetroxide in combination with sodium periodate. What happens over here? It will lead to the formation of a cis diol and the cis diol will be undergoing oxidative cleavage using the next reagent which is NaIO4 and the cis diol will be converted to a aldehyde okay, group. Another example in which we can see OH, this will become OH over here and OH over there. Okay. And what will be that will be the role of the osmium tetroxide? What will be the function of NaIO4? Will be to cliff this cis diol from this position over here. So there will be a carbon loss. If you look at the product, here we are having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But in the product, we are having eleven carbon. That means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So this CH2 unit after cleavage is lost.
product is having one carbon less what about the next part similar thing will happen as you can see there are two carbons over here so basically this is almost like your ozonolysis okay one can think that this particular double bond is being cleaved and how it is cleaved first it will lead to the formation of the diol and the diol will be undergoing oxidative cleavage in the presence of NiO4 okay next this is Miller's olefin hydroxylation in which what we are doing we are using catalytic amounts of osmium tetroxide in presence of some co-oxidants so the first co-oxidant that we are using is going to be hydrogen peroxide okay so out here what will happen this is the c double bond c alkene and that will be converted to syn diol so this will be our product using the same analogy we will say this is the c double bond c again that will mean that syn diol will be produced and so that is our product over here okay we have to keep in mind that the stereochemistry will always be sin okay again out here this is the c double bond c and using osmium tetroxide in presence of h2o2 along with tertiary butanol we are again producing the syn diol similarly this is the C double bond C over here using osmium tetroxide in presence of 30% of hydrogen peroxide. If you look at the stereochemistry, the stereochemistry is showing that production of syn 1, 2 diol is taking place over here. Okay. Now <clears throat> What other co-oxidants we can use? Sodium chlorate or potassium chlorate, silver chlorate, barium chlorate and amine oxides. Amine oxides we have seen before in Upjohn's dihydroxylation, yet we will be taking a... So, now we have been given a butene dioic acid and over here what kind of a gi this is this is we will say e okay or trans so if your hydroxylation is happening selectively syn way and if you are given a geometric isomer which is e then the product that will be formed will be a DL pair, which should be kept in mind. On the reverse uh, side, if you are given a butene or any other ene which is having cis or Z stereochemistry, then in those cases, when syn hydroxylation takes place, the products formed is a meso and that will be having a sigma plane of symmetry. So over here, we will get a, this molecule and that molecule and both of them will be mirror images to each other. Remember, for cycloalkenes, if the carbon ring is less than 8, then only one type of geometric isomer is possible which is of the cis type and cis compounds when they undergo syn dihydroxylation then obviously they will have the OH groups on the same side and you will see for this molecule shown over here this carbon bond and that carbon and if you take a plane from this point pass to the middle of this bond 
then you can see it is dividing the molecule into two equal halves so this is a meso compound that is what i was saying in the initial part of the lecture let's go to the next molecule again we have a trans butuene so over here we will be getting a dl pair because the addition is of the syn mode we have a cis butene and over here since the addition of the syn mode so we will say syn dihydroxylation on cis 2 butene will give you a meso product which will be having as you can see a mirror plane just follow the pointer passing right through this cc bond okay now you have one bicyclic system if this bridge head that we are seeing over here is lying on the top then the osmium tetroxide cannot come from the top side that is the ester cannot form from the top side because there is a steric hindrance from this bridge head so it will come from below if this is the plane of the ring it will come from below like that and not from like that because of this steric hindrance and hence the oh group the stereochemistry over here we are showing with the beta bonds that is the dashed bonds okay indicating that these oh groups are lying below the plane of this ring and they are not in the same side as with the bridge head next one similarly if these groups are lying below the plane of this ring the oh groups coming from the osmate ester after this reagent reacts with this in a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition manner so the osmium tetroxide is going to approach from the top and not from below because to avoid the steric hindrance that would be coming from these groups hence now if these are lying below oh group should come from the top so that is how we have to do this kind of problems which carry a little bit more information regarding the stereochemistry or stereochemical approach of the osmium tetroxide and how should be the disposition of the oh groups with respect to the rest of the molecule okay next here we have anthracene and we have been treating this with osmium tetroxide in acetone in which the dihydroxylation of these reactive bonds take place which when treated with potassium ferri cyanide further oxidation takes place to give you the cleavage of these bonds and giving you this acid okay for this molecule this is the in bond that will be more reactive because because of the this ring being aromatic and that also being aromatic okay so this is having less stability and so this is more reactive and hence this will be forming the dihydroxylated compound okay so if you also consider this unit to be the phenanthrene unit in a phenanthrene unit this ring has aromatic character this also has aromatic character whereas this bond over here is the most reactive pi bond towards okay bromine or one can say for cis dihydroxylation reaction okay that is how one can think or crack this problem 